That's me running again. Fake all over the radio. Look at it. <laughs> wow. Two meters further, he starts shouting. We found a part of a bell buckle. Are you kidding? Me? Oh, look at that, man. We're back on the western front, quite close to Hitler's west wall. So a lot of fighting took place here. We're gonna try and see if we can recover some World War II history. As you can see, we're on some steep terrain. So let's see if we can find the first spot of the day. Let's see what we can do. And look at that position. It's in a triangular shape. There are still rocks here in the side to reinforce the position. Maybe this was an MG nest. And we are on top of a hill and goes down very steep. So yeah, that's promising. Right now I'm just making my way towards Matthias because we are just starting up and he points out German barbed wire original from the Second World War. So they use these to fortify the positions and there is one right here. So this is just on the surface, you know, it's still here. So I just found my first signal of the day and let me just point you out. Here's a very large position. And right next to that position, there we go. It's an American M1 Garand round, live. So that's a good sign. We already expected that Americans would have defended this hill. And uh, there's already evidence of that. So let's see if we can find more. Let's see what they left behind. I must say, this is quite an exciting area. There's literally foxholes everywhere. And there's a beautiful one, as you can see. And I actually got a signal right into that foxhole. And look what I just dug up. Easy to miss, it looks a bit like a leaf. But this is an American ration bag. Look at that, let's fold it open a bit. There we go. There, lemon juice powder. Vitamin C, 60 milligrams. This has been laying under the soil for more than 75 years and it's seeing daylight again. That's beautiful. So definitely in this foxhole there were US soldiers here. We do wonder what they experienced here. And listen with me, signals here. More signals there. This definitely was a US foxhole. <laughs> wow, that's exciting. Time for a small update. I dug up some more signals and there were actually more ration bags there. Also, interestingly enough, a German rifle casing. So this foxhole was occupied by both the Germans and the American soldiers. And look here, I also found a Nescafe coffee bag. Now that is cool as well. I found a knife, look at this. There's still a part of the handle there. I'm not sure if that's military, but we should, we should brush this up. This looks really neat. Let's see if you can discover something. Maybe there's something still on there. Some markings maybe. Well, this was definitely left here by the soldiers. I'm just wondering if this is a standard issue knife or something different. That's a cool find anyhow. Can we discover something? There is the no, grip from wood. wood or? I don't think it's wood. No? Wow, that's cool. Right next to this very big dugout over here, I think Ray just hit the jackpot. He found quite a lot of American ration food cans and there's like lemon juice bags as well there and coffee bags, it's all there. But the interesting thing is, it's quite smelly in here and that's because the content of these cans is still here. I think this is, oh, it really smells. That's dehydrated cheese, guys. That's what it looks like when it comes out of the ground after 75 years. <laughs> oh, this is. What do you have there? Yeah. Here's more, you can see it here. <laughs> oh yeah, you can see there's one. Wow. Yes, broken one. Yeah. Oh, it really smells. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matthias over here found something interesting. Look at that. It's clear evidence of the uh, artillery attacks that went on here. It's an exploded mortar and that tail is still perfectly intact. 
It's the blown up part. And I think it says 1943 at the bottom there. Definitely a cool piece. So the next interesting item to pop up, I got quite a loud iron signal. You can see it over there already. That is a very recognizable shape, but no worries. As you can see there, it's empty. We got an uh, MK2 frag grenade here from the American army. So maybe they use this to make fire, I'm not sure, but the detonator is gone and this thing has not exploded. Yeah, the condition is not the best. This one was produced from iron, as you can see, it's very rusted, but that's a very cool, iconical find. Nice weight as well. I think you can definitely throw this a long way. Quite effective, I'd say. Wow, I need to catch my breath. I just made my way over to Jeff, and he started shouting Panzerfaust. You might be right. Yeah, I think here you can see. The right thickness, the aiming mechanism is on there. Yep. And the warhead is missing, so it's probably fired. Yep, it looks like it. Think it's already loose enough to get it out? No, not yet. All right, I think we need to excavate it a bit further. There is a lot of movement there, so you don't have to wait long for this. All right, no need to keep us waiting any longer, I think. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Panzerfaust, 100 meters. Yeah, I think so. Some somebody should give that Some man a brush. <laughs> nice one, nice brush. <laughs> well, it, it will, it's the only one I have. <laughs> it will do the Maybe. trick. There we go. So this was effective up to 100 meters range. Could take out tanks, armored vehicles easily. I'm running again. This time it's Ray who started shouting. Let's see if he can meet up. He told me he found something big. And it's actually right next to a forest trail. There we go. Let's see. Oh, that's part of a big casing, man. Yeah. Oh, it's in a rotten condition. We found pretty ones here last time. But it's one, it's the first one of this trip. Okay. So this was fired by a US howitzer. The Americans were sweeping this forest from the German forces. So uh, they probably used some heavy guns. Right, in the same trench, this time it's Matthias who told me he thinks he might have a big shell casing, so. There I am. Let's see if we can take this one out as well. Let's see if this one is complete. The one from Ray was broken in half. Pretty sure that's casing. Yeah, that is the right size. There she comes. Yes. Yeah. Almost. Um, almost. It's a half one, but it's again outer casing. Awesome. So they really dumped a lot of those here. Last time we were here, we found eight pieces. Now we already got two. So we're losing daylight. Let me just give you an overview of all of the shell casings that we found this afternoon. Five pieces, they're all brass, but they are a bit corroded, but we found five pieces from the US howitzer. It's a nice result. We'll go drink some beer, regroup, refresh, and get on to a smooth start tomorrow. All right, it's the second day, and we just started off, maybe 10 minutes of digging. And uh, I'm actually running over to Matthias right now because he shouted over the walkie that he found a bayonet in between the barracks. You can still see the contours of the barrack, former barrack right here. And actually last time we found a Mauser K98K rifle right there. That was found by Faye. Give her a follow on Instagram, by the way. Faye98K. Now, how's that for a name? <laughs> All right, let's run over to Matthias. I cannot believe it. That's, we dug here last time as well. But we missed this one. Let's see. What he found? I'm pretty sure it's a bayonet. He's pretty sure, okay. Yeah, it's definitely a bayonet. Right? Okay, okay, I'm gonna get my close-up camera. I think you are right. Yeah. All right, so the close-up camera is there and all of my friends are here. Everybody's looking. <laughs> we all wanna witness this because bayonets are really cool to find. This is always an exciting moment. We don't really see Bakelite grips there, I think, right? So. Oh, oh. it's a bent. Oh, that's weird. Oh wow, it has a sharp end still. How weird yeah. is that? How does it bend like that? They did that on Do purpose probably. Is this actually on the surface? Yeah, Almost. it just was sticking out more or less. Oh wow. So it, it would have had wooden grips, but those are gone. Huh. So that's, that's, that's really that interesting. It's a bayonet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely a German bayonet, yeah. Really weird, how did they bend it like that? What was the... Stuck it into a tree maybe? Yeah, and maybe. It, and then threw it away. Maybe, Maybe it belongs to the, the K98. Yeah. 
Maybe. Maybe the RED soldier was fed up with mixing concrete. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm gonna have a brush. Sure yeah, I here. Oh, Under angle. So last time V 98 k found a K98K here. <laughs> now we find a bayonet. Yeah, very nice, man. Yeah. Right next to this forest road, I think I found something interesting. Let me just show you. I got a very loud iron signal, quite big as well. And you can clearly see this barrel shaped object. I'm not sure if it's actually going to be a rifle. Maybe it's a spare barrel, but let's find out. There it comes. Yes. <laughs> it's an MG42 spare barrel. Look at that. I think the MG42 fired up to 1200 rounds per minute. And uh, yeah, the barrel could overheat, but they could easily uh, take it out and put a new barrel in. That's, that's probably why this one was dumped here. All right, let's, uh, let's brush this thing up a little bit. See if you can get it a little bit cleaner. It's also better to recognize it then. Wow, yeah, that barrel end looks cool still. There's a hole in there, should be there. Makes the very recognizable shape. There we go. Wow, that's cool. Happy with that one. That is a nice find. See my detector over there. See those white spots? There is a lot of porcelain and bottles here on the surface. And look at this. I just spotted this uh, Maggi bottle and that's some sort of, yeah, like herbs, gravy, like liquid herbs that, uh, that you could put in the soup to make it taste better. This is typical German Maggi bottle. This is from the Second World War, guys. There's trash here everywhere. So I was just called over because Ray and Faye wanted to show me something. They found a little cam dump themselves. Look at that hole they already dug. And there's porcelain and glass bits everywhere. Oh, that's the bayonet from Matthias. We've already seen that. Nice times. Oh, wow. Yeah, there is an eagle on there. And, and, that. and the year. The year as well. Yeah, there we go. And there's a year, you said? Yeah. 1938. Cool, man. Look at all of that rubbish. A lot of uh, shoe, shoe parts. Shoe parts, yeah. yeah. Shoe this looks like perfume, toothpaste tubes, yeah. Wow. Some pens. Some pen. <laughs> wow, look at this. <laughs> this is just a cool feature that I wanted to show you. The remains of the uh, barracks and foundations are still clearly visible. And look at that thing over there. I don't know what that was. Maybe this was like a water reservoir or a set of stairs leading to some barrack. At least they carved out an area for a building here. A small, uh, small building. Maybe it was used for storage. Not sure. A lot of those foundations are still here. It's really cool. Yeah, this is what I was hoping for. We found proof of the RAD camp that I uh, found out about that should be here. So Jeffrey just found this part of, uh, of a knife. And look at the inscriptions here. There at the bottom, it says, it says R-A-D, and there's a year on there as well there. What did it say, 38? I think it was 39. 39. Wow, so <laughs> I didn't even know they already stamped knives like this. Like, I didn't know they have their own knives. But that's really great evidence of the camp that was here. Alright, check this out. I just dug up a field phone. How awesome is that? I'm not sure, there's probably more in there. The signal was huge, but I'm not sure if this is American or German. There's probably markings on there. We should definitely brush this up and uh, see if there's any markings on it. Alright, let's see what we can do here. We should clean it better later on. We found out this is actually a German bunker telephone. As there are quite some bunkers in this area, it must have been taken from one of those nearby bunkers. Thank you, my friend. So we decided to do some detecting on this field, right next to the forest. And uh, Matthias started shouting that he found the handle of a bayonet. Looks like oh. a dress. Oh, isn't that a Hitler Youth one? 
No, I Does think it's a dress bayonet. Might be a... No, it has to be a dress bayonet, this one, I think. Parade bayonets. Parade bayonets, yeah, exactly. wow. <laughs> That's awesome. First, first signal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's still part of the Bakelite grips. Visible. Part of the parade bayonet, wow. Why is it just a handle though, like... That's weird, I've not really seen that before. I think they were made in separate pieces. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, then that explains a lot. Maybe it was disassembled and discarded by yeah, a soldier. Yeah, exactly. I cannot believe this. Matthias just found this bay in that part. Two meters further, he starts shouting. We found a part of a bell buckle. It's the front plate. Wow, man. Is it Kriegsmarine? Kriegsmarine? It, it's gilded. It's also a parade, maybe. Are you kidding? Oh, look at that, man. Wow, congratulations, man. Thanks. That is a really sick find. How is that for a piece of history? Can I... Oh. Maybe the rest of the buckle is in there, though. So, guys, for your, for your information, this would have been placed on the belt buckle. And this is just the front piece. I wasn't expecting that here. Right, we're just... We just got some water to clean this life. It's definitely gilded. Yeah. That, you think this is a parade from a parade buckle, right? Yeah, it might be just Kriegsmarine. Wow. Well, I'm not quite sure. I've, I've never seen these before. It's gold plated. Is that why you think it's Kriegsmarine? Yeah, I have one at home, also gold plated. Oh, wow. Well, that's a nice one. Let's see what that is. That's me running again. <laughs> Fake all over the radio that you found a ring. And Matthias just said it's a World War I canteen ring. Look at it. <laughs> wow! Are you kidding me? Is that silver? Yeah, it has to be silver. That is a banger of it's, a find. It's very nice and round still. You also. have the oh, iron cross. Wow. And then you have what the national uh, colors. Well, Faye was complaining before she was not that lucky at this trip. And her luck has turned for sure. Let me grab that. Wow. So there is a World War I iron cross on there. It's silver, I'm probably holding it upside down. There. That is a beauty. Wow. I'm happy. <laughs> so last time we were here on this field, I found a World War I German helmet emblem. And this is another World War I find. And we also just found World War II stuff. So this field is really, really interesting. So much history on one field, it's incredible. The question is, do you think it fits on you? We can try. <laughs> Not bad. It's a little bit too big, but... I think it looks pretty. Mm -hmm. World War One German button as well. Yeah. Yeah. World War One German button? Is there a Prussian crown on it? Yeah, it's not. This is a blank one. Well, that's it for this episode. Time to go home. Thank you all for watching, especially my patrons. Make sure to check out my Patreon if you haven't already. If you want an exclusive look behind the scenes, we will be back soon with another adventure. So stay tuned. See you all next time. Cheers.